2011 VIP Awards. We're happy to be your host here. I'm Kenton Kip, and I don't see where Eric is. Where's Eric? Eric, Houston, we have a problem. What? All right. Our first. Oh my gosh! I'm late. Thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Great show, Barbie. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go check in the control room and make sure everything's OK, all right? Sure. OK, I'll be right back. All right. All right. You're back awful fast. Barbie, I am back. I'm back from the future. What's the date? It's April 28th. Oh, no. I've gone back too far. Who's that? I don't know. No? Yeah? Sure was handsome. And so Eric traveled from year to year, date to date, hoping each time that he finally made it to the day of the VIP awards. Until... Barbie! Barbie! Am I back? What are you wearing? You've got to put on your nice suit for the award ceremony tonight. Tonight? Then I finally made it back. Mwah! Oh. <coughs> Ish. All that time travel sure made me sleepy. Oh. Maybe I'll just sit down for a, for a second here. You know who never gets a trophy? Who? This guy. <laughs> that's, you know, that's true. And, you know, in honor of this being the 10th annual VIP Awards, we thought we'd start out tonight doing something a little bit different. And so, Kenton, mm -hmm. it, is, it is my pleasure, my honor, to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award for Best VIP Awards Host. Wow, that is lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Um, I mean, that's great. This is, as you said, this is our 10th year. Uh, I've hosted all 10 of these uh, awards shows. I've had uh, several different co-hosts with me, some better than others. Um, <laughs> but you know, there is a reason they keep, they keep bringing me back. You got to give the people what they want. And uh, you know, I just want to give a special thanks to, uh, to, uh, to everyone that laughs at my jokes. Obviously, you get me. Uh, for those of you that don't laugh, you know, that's cool because I know that you're laughing on the inside. I also like to thank my, my family, my lovely wife and children. Um, also, you know, um, my crew, uh, the Ken. staff here at North Metro TV, uh, the people that make Mountain Dew, uh, pie, love pie, Ken. candy corn. Ken. 
Um, Saber, Kenton, sabermetrics, Kenton, 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 stain Kenton, removal, Kenton, compound Kenton, sentences, Kenton, Velcro, Kenton. what? Well, I just, you know, I thought, you know, 10th anniversary, we, we were going to give, we were going to each get to give each other an award. You know, you were going to give one to me, hmm. two? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see, I got that, I think, yeah. Here you go. This is, uh, <clears throat> that's for, uh, you know, achievement and adequate performance. You know? That's for, that's for you. It's, it's smaller. Yeah, you notice that. Do you know yeah. what, though? What? Um, it, comes with, uh, it comes with its own stand. So, oh. you know, you just yeah. kind of put that on there, just like that. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty. That's for you. Oh. Just like that. Okay, that's... That's pretty nice. I, I mean, that's. <laughs> you see, well, Eric, this yeah. is this is why we can't have nice things. Fair enough. Well, you know, you know what, Kenton. You know what? Thank you, thank you. I, I want to thank all of the great volunteers who, who who make such great shows and make this job worthwhile and worth doing exciting every day. Um, I want I want to thank my mom. Okay. I, okay. I, I want to thank my mom. Yeah. Wanna, okay. Okay. Yeah, we get it. Well, I, I just have a couple more people I want to want to thank. And yeah. So you know. Yeah. See, you know what though? But you uh, had all that time. Yeah. Right? But uh, you know, don't worry about it. You know, we'll just this. We'll, we'll do TV magic. Yeah. We'll, we'll put that in later. Just don't oh. worry about it. You know. Plus, okay. you know, we only have the room for so long. You know, time is money. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. All okay. right. All right. Okay. All right. There you go. Put this over here. All right. All right, first up is the Rookie of the Year Award. The award goes to a person who has made significant contributions in their first year. This year's winner started as an intern last spring. He was actually a double intern, which is different than like a double agent or a double cheeseburger. He showed up to nearly every shoot, putting in 200 hours for fulfilling his requirements for school and learning quite a bit along the way. He started out exclusively working with audio, which is what he went to school for. But after putting him on camera for a parade, we started to see that his value to our productions uh, would increase, and it certainly did. Over the last year, he has also operated Scorebox, Tape Replay, and has started doing some uh, digging into research on our switcher as well. He is intelligent, asks the right questions, and puts what he learns into practice. And uh, I have confidence putting him anywhere on the crew, and recently he has even brought his little brother into the fold. Uh, it's people like him that add a lot to the collective team. He continues to expand his knowledge and stretch himself with experience and his attitude and drive uh, make him easy to work with. We are fortunate enough to have him on our crew, our 2011 Rookie of the Year, Dan Rafael. Dan, thanks. Oh, I get to say some words. Sure do. Great. Uh, I'd just like to say I've been, you know, I've been proud to be working with uh, everybody that I've been working with this past this past year or so. You know, all the people on the sports crew, everybody at the station. It's it's been fun. I've learned so much past uh, from what I've learned in college. It's all added up, and I, it's been a great experience. i <laughs> I'm flattered to receive an award tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is La Camera Extraordinaire Award given to a versatile cameraman. This year's winner has been working with us for over four years. He put in his time on game camera, learning the ropes of our truck production and moving on to high tide and handheld cameras as well. He has a great work ethic and has given us a lot of flexibility with our camera positions, being able to put him at any spot on any shoot. He has also filled in on audio and graphics, helping out whenever needed. He's generous, hardworking, and punctual. And once again, he is helping us out with our awards show, provided his own sound and lighting equipment, and he is a prime example of why we continue to improve our productions. Congratulations to the winner of La Camera Extraordinaire Award, John Holshue.
thank you everybody, I appreciate it. Um, it has been a blast working the last four years with these guys. Uh, it's a great crew, uh, everybody uh, does an awesome job, tries to put out a good production, and uh, Ken's leadership has always uh, been exceptional in helping us do that. So I appreciate the award, thank you very much. That's John's fourth award. He has also won Rookie of the Year, Useful Utility, and Silver Plated Shoulder Award. No one can generate a character the way Matt Waldron does. No one. Having said that, there is an individual who has molded his life after the Saskatoon Sasquatch and lived to tell about it, a feat all on its own and very rare and flirting with danger. He is consistent and hardworking, working on different shows in the studio and out on truck shoots, shooting, editing, making graphics, and flirting with Barbie. He is a man of a thousand nicknames and his work on Sports Den was a huge help this past fall. His best nickname is Jerry and uh, thankfully he's not here to argue with us with me. For some reason he doesn't like that nickname but it's just the best nickname for Jer. Congratulations to our nickname of the Matt Waldron Character Generator Award, Jeremy Millington. Unfortunately, Jeremy uh, was not able to make it out to the award ceremony, but we were able to pre-tape an acceptance speech on Jeremy's behalf. Are you guys sure this is good lighting? Because this just this doesn't... I don't think the light, when the light's back there, I don't think that's... No, just go? Okay. Uh, well, thank you for this award. Uh, I think it's pretty clear who I am receiving it. Um, you know what? This award's great, but I'm just happy we got Osama. We got him. Maybe we got him. Round of applause for that. All right. Enjoy the egg rolls. Peace out. Wish I could be there. Enjoying those egg rolls. His seventh award and his second Matt Waldron Award. He has also won ENG Shooter, Rookie of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, USA Cup Ironman, and the Jerry Poppins Ironman Award. And also, unfortunately, Matt Waldron could not be with us today. Uh, he had a root canal. We miss you, buddy. Get better soon. We'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> now we're going to turn it back over to Eric Houston, ladies and gentlemen. Metro TV, we value the contributions of all of our producers. Whether you produce one show in a year or 50, all that matters is that you have fun doing it. After all, the production of even a single program is a huge time commitment, which is why it takes uh, an especially uh, dedicated and passionate person to produce two or three programs, let alone the 45 plus programs produced by the producers we honor every year with the award for most programs produced. Uh, like last year, I'll be announcing the, the runners-up for each award, too. So if you are a runner-up, please stand up to be recognized by your peers and to receive a certificate from my lovely assistant, Ms. Heidi Arnson. <laughs> this year's runners-up for most programs produced are David Turnage for Sunday Senior Moments, Cindy Hardy for Kingswood Church, and Sharon Schultz for the Church of St. Paul Mass. Stand up. <laughs> Our winner this year is no stranger to this award. He's an amazingly dedicated producer who, since 1994, has produced 336 programs for North Metro TV. And we all know that he's produced a lot more than that. He's a twice weekly staple of our studio and serves as a constant inspiration and example to me and everyone else who, pr who produces a show under our roof. This year, the winner for most programs produced is, of course, Rick Larson of Love Power. Thank you. 
I knew I produced a lot of them. I didn't know I produced so many of them. <laughs> and, and he's right. It is a lot of fun producing these shows. Um, I was talking with Linda a few minutes ago from, um, um, oh, what's the name of your program? It's Artbeat. Artbeat. Yes. yes. Okay. Artbeat. And she said, you know what? If you start producing programs, just keep producing them. So don't quit. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Year after year, I'm both thrilled and amazed by the number of new producers we have walk through our doors with nothing but the idea for a new TV show. And sometimes they don't even have that. Sometimes all there is is a curiosity and a passion for television production, qualities which these next producers have in spades. These are men and women who produced their first programs for North Metro TV during 2010. And they overcame that steep learning curve that comes with anyone's first year of doing anything to produce a second, third, and sometimes fifth or sixth program in that first year. I, for one, am always impressed by the verve of these rookie producers who we honor every year with the award for most programs produced by a new producer. This year, the runners-up for most programs produced by a new producer are Stevie Lindsay, Joe Sparts, and Laura Sargent. This year, the most programs produced by a new producer award goes to someone who not only produced more programs than any other freshman producer with his fresh and exciting program about hot rods and local car customizers, he did so while becoming an absolute fixture of the station, volunteering on multiple projects for myself and other producers, and even performing as Santa Claus in our first ever Christmas special. <laughs> this year's most programs produced to a new, by a new producer award goes to Joe Karpowitz. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even want to do the show. I just seen these before, and, right. and oh. Fran had told me about them. And I'm like, I just want the trophy. <laughs> One more off the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, a, I've really had a great time. I want to thank everybody that's helped me. Um, Eric, of course, tons, tons. Well, thank you, thank you, Joe. Devery, Fran, Linda, just everybody, bunch of over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, God, and my lovely bride that allows me to do these things. She didn't know what she was getting into when she signed on with me, but she's learning little by little. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Television production is not a job for the impatient, and nowhere is that more evident than in the dreaded task of editing. You can spend hours and hours sitting in front of the dull glow of the computer screen before you're even done capturing your footage, let alone editing it. Yet there are still those of you out there who have, who have not only mastered a task that many find frustrating, you truly enjoy it. Somehow combining science with art inside of intricately assembled timelines to produce some of the best edited programs I've seen on any television station. The 2011 Excellence in Editing runners-up are Rob Clark for Haiti, EIEI, -E Oops, and others. Devry Foss for Local Edition and Peril of the Lost Card. And Don Doring for the Coon Creek Watershed District Public Service Announcements. <laughs> this next producer is one of North Metro TV's true master editors. A distinction here in this year with the production of yet another of his wonderfully off-kilter animated shorts. This one combining animated pictures, drawings, and live action footage. He's a true wizard in the edit suite and his creativity and innovation always impress me. This year the Excellence in Editing Award goes to Robert Elwood.
This is really nice. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks for everyone at North Metro for letting me make these weird films and all this crazy stuff. And my parents for supporting me and everyone on their <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This next award is one of our newest and was created to honor those producers whose work with and devotion to the camera has surpassed the usual high standard set by our access producers to become something I can only describe as art. In their hands, the camera frame becomes a canvas. A rack of shoes melts into a ray of color of form. A storm drain glistles with newly fallen rain, rain newly fallen rainfall. The process of putting up a tent becomes a veritable epic, and a simple dress becomes a bold statement of passion and fashion. We've christened this award the Eye of the Camera Award, and this year the runners-up are Laura Sargent, Don Doring, and Jake Sigler. This next honoree is more often a crew person than a producer, contributing his ample skill behind the camera to his fellow volunteers, helping them realize their visions while whittling away at his own whenever he can find the time. He is the sort of person who's just happy behind a camera and delights in checking one out just to stay in practice. I, he's always dazzled me with his innate talent, but somehow over the course of 2010, he only became better. This year, the Eye of the Camera Award goes to Mark Steensgaard. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure and uh, an honor to receive it. Um, it's fun to work with all the people I get to work with, but I especially like the art team, team and uh, um, Linda, Linda and uh, Rick and his show, um, Exploring Aviation, and even like uh, Laura's uh, screenplay uh, in a jam, um, and even those like TJ who put up with me in the productions he does for community stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway, Kenton Kip. I appreciate that. <clears throat> the next award, <clears throat> excuse me, I got choked up after that introduction. It was very touching. <clears throat> oh, gets me every time. The next award was introduced last year. It's the AFLP On-Air Talent Award. Now, we haven't had uh, much on-camera talent in recent years, at least not in addition to our announcers. This past fall, we came across an intern who had experience and a passion for sports reporting. We put her into the fire on her first night as a sideline reporter for a live football game at Centennial on homecoming night. We were immediately impressed with her stand-ups and interviews and the amount of poise that she had early on after several months of many football, basketball, and hockey games. Uh, she had been steadily improving her reporting skills and has recently been commentating games for us this spring, making the haul down from St. Cloud for each game. She does a great job in taking notes on her performances and putting what, she's, what she has learned into practice. Her work ethic and dedication to her craft put her on a path for a very bright future. The winner of the AFLP On-Air on Talent Award goes to Allie Arlt. Unfortunately, uh, Allie was not able to make it out to the, uh, the awards. Uh, she's both going to school at St. Cloud and then uh, at home in uh, Mankato, but we were able to pre-tape an acceptance speech. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm very happy and excited to receive this award. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone responsible for me uh, getting this award. Help me out along the way. I'd like to give a special thanks 
to, um, to everyone, uh, nobody in particular, just everyone, a very equal, just spread out across the board, kind of like it's butter being spread out. That's how my thanks is distributed, just like butter from a knife, very equal, um, maybe like a butter substitute, lower on the cholesterol, fat, you know, don't, none of that trans fat. So I guess I'd like to thank, um, like to thank zero trans fat would be, be who I'd like to thank. Thank you. That was not Allie, but it was a clear representation of what Allie Arnold's acceptance speech would have been. <laughs> <clears throat> the next award is the ENG Shooter of the Year. Now, for those of you not familiar with the acronym ENG, it stands for Enigmatic Nerf Goiter. That doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, that should be electronic news gathering. Yeah, you use electricity, I knew that. We use ENG shooters mostly for shooting highlights and interviews for our show Sports Den and also in uh, the field as well for our productions. This last year we plucked a, guy, a new guy from NWCT or Channel 12 for people that are in the know. His first assignment for us was a marathon volleyball game at Centennial. He shot it all, took great notes, and made it very easy on me when it came down to editing it all into highlights. I was immediately impressed, especially since I wasn't used to new guys that already had that kind of experience. I used him as often as he was available for us to shoot, and uh, as the gingerbread man, he would expedite his travels, assuring that his arrival was as swift as humanly possible. He made his way into the truck crew as well, running audio and camera before I forced him to do CG, and he made the inevitable mistake of being really good at it. He recently cracked into the world of replay at a tennis match in April. True story. I have tremendous confidence in anything that we have him do. He is an excellent shooter, and we are privileged to have him on the crew when he takes time out of his other two jobs to help us out. He just sold his Ford Focus, and he is feeling the vibe. <laughs> <clears throat> He's an engaged man, and congratulations to the winner of the ENG Shooter of the Year Award, Roger Larson. much on a phone call and a whim so uh, it's just uh, it's been really fun and uh, I like working with the crew and it's just really fun working here so hope to keep working so all right, all right. You better <laughs> the phone call came from Mayor McCheese who I hold in high esteem he was as good as hired the next award is the Dean Hombo Award. Ten years ago, the world was mildly shocked when Dean Hombo took home the coveted prize. He originally received the award for taking the shot of the year from Tony Hull. Big hit, grass in the lens, awesome. And Dean was eventually able to eat solid foods. We've since modified the qualifier for the award. No longer do we wish harm upon members of our crew publicly. Just keep reminding Bruce to stay off those boxes. Don't stand on them. <laughs> the award is all about the camera work these days. This year's winner has been volunteering and working with us for over eight years. He became a part-time employee in January of 2006 and still goes over his hours and into volunteer time regularly. In fact, over the course of those eight plus years, no, one's, no one has put in more time than this guy. It's not just the time and dedication that makes him special. He's always willing to come to the office to get things done, drive the scaffold truck or the production truck, help out on sports stand or inside entertainment. He has a great attitude as long as you don't peeve him off by slacking off during setup or making fun of country music. <laughs> he has established himself as a top handheld operator, and we continue to see great progress from him year after year. He's one of our top guys no matter what camera he is on, and he shows his veteran leadership by keeping the crew on track, which makes things easier for myself and Matt. He has a great work ethic and a passion for working with the truck and with all the other guys. Congratulations to this year's winner of the Dean Humble Award, Mike Bouchard. Hey, Mikey. Congratulations, man. Thanks. Wow. Eight years. When working with uh, Kenton 
the crew, the best. Um, working with uh, like Danica, Ben, TJ, everybody yeah. at North Metro. Thought you like that, Ben. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, Captain. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and that is Mike's seventh award. He's also won for Rookie of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, Swedish Useful Utility, Platinum Shoulder Award, and Silver Plated Shoulder Awards. Also to note, Ben likes hearing his own name. <laughs> now I'm going to say another name. Eric. Go <laughs> get him. seen more and more shows crafted by entire crews of volunteers instead of being crafted by just a single auteur. These crews can consist of as few as two people and as many as ten. Sometimes they're old friends working together toward a common goal. Sometimes they're, they're relative strangers working together to create something new and exciting. Last year we presented the Crew of the Year Award for the first time to honor these production families and I'm proud to do so once again this year. The 2011 runners-up for Crew of the Year are Anoka County Eagle, Artbeat, Chopped Salad, and Karaoke Classics. This year's crew of the year is also one of our oldest. Over the years, several people have been part of this crew, coming and going, filling in as needed. But the constants are always three hardworking ladies who meet month after month for almost four years now in Studio B to craft a truly inspirational and spiritually moving program called The Virtuous Woman. Thank you very much uh, to the Lord Jesus that gave me the grace to be able to do this and then to my friends that have decided to be the crew and to be able to be there every time, although I don't know anything about electronics. <laughs> <laughs> but they have always been there. And of course, the staff of the Metro TV, uh, Michelle, uh, uh, Eric, uh, Damien, and so many others. You just feel that you are entering into your own office when you come to Metro TV. It's amazing. I want to say thank you to all of you for this. And I want to say thank you, especially uh, for my friends that are always here, and of course for my family. Thank you very much. <laughs> While I'm continually amazed by those crews we just mentioned and the many more who make North Metro TV home, I cannot forget the hard work of the producers who do it all by themselves. These producers truly go it alone, running their own cameras, acting as their own hosts, editing their own shows. It takes a special drive and persistence to make a show that way, and so it is my pleasure to honor those producers with one of our newest awards, the One Man Band Award. This year, the runners-up for the One Man Band Award are Don Doring for Coon Creek Watershed PSAs and Robert Elwood for Drawing with Robert Elwood, Gore, and others. <laughs> this next producer not only usually runs his own camera, edits, and acts as his own host, he does it while juggling homework, Boy Scouts, and all of the pressures of middle school. And he does it all with a grace, wisdom, and professionalism far beyond his years. I am proud to present the first ever One Man Band Award to Jake Sigler. Uh, I 
I'd like to thank my mom and my dad and the TV station, Eric and uh, Ben. Got to say hi to Ben. Um, I liked working with TJ, Mike, and Jeremy that one time. That was pretty fun. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, Jay. So far, all of the awards tonight, at least from the public access side of things, have honored what goes on behind the camera. But we couldn't be true to the spirit of these awards without also honoring all of the hard work that goes on in front of the camera. Sure, being a television host may seem like a glamorous job, but that's hardly true. After all, the host is the public face of their program, and it's their job to connect with the viewer at home and provide their program with an identity that the viewer can trust. And besides that, Hosts have to put up with all of those pesky fans asking for autographs at the supermarket. <laughs> we honor these hosts, and we have some great ones at North Metro TV, every year with the Host of the Year Award. And this year, the runners-up for Host of the Year are Janet Gullickson for Love Power, Austin Gamst for Local Edition, Ted Butler for Anoka County Eagle, and Ben Rays for Local Edition. Our next honoree is one of the few to find a home in public access after a career as a professional entertainer. As a singer in New York, she entertained thousands, but I dare say that her work in the North Metro is some of the best of her sterling career. Every month, she teams with producer Fran Sorensen as the new host of Positive Investigations, a role she approaches with zest, curiosity, and spunk. This year's host of the year is Joanne Prasinski. wasn't for Fran, I wouldn't be a hostess. We have lots of fun together and joke a lot and have a great time. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he's in close-up, <laughs> Kenton Kip. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Ben. <laughs> Our Golden Voice Award winner is not only the voice of North Metro TV Sports, but also a symbol of perseverance, a testament to dedication, and a prime example of why we should never take anything for granted. Commentating sports is something that always looks and sounds easier than it really is. I can recall countless times when a new announcer has struggled through broadcasts, stumbling, uh, stammering, becoming repetitive, or countless other things that will cause you to struggle and become suspect of scrutiny by the viewers. A harsh wake-up call to the reality of how difficult it is to carry a broadcast telling the story for two hours with minimal mistakes. It takes a lot of time and experience, and our golden voice has certainly put in that time. He has been battling heart and other health issues for several years, even cheating death multiple times. I'm not even making that up. He has pushed himself as far as his body will allow him to in his efforts to call high school sports on North Metro television. He has the same passion for his family, friends, and for life. He never needs a script, although he can read. I've seen him do it. <laughs> <clears throat> he is never short on words. He's unpredictable at times and can get pretty fired up, which is why I purposely egg him on to get a reaction, kind of like poking a bear with a sharp stick. <laughs> I enjoy working with them, especially co-hosting Sportsden together. We have a special working relationship and friendship that just works. We don't pull any punches. Our issues come out on the table, often on the air, and they get resolved quickly and we move on to bigger and better things. I'm a fan of listening to him call games. You can't fake passion or heart. And you certainly can't replace that amount of experience and range, especially in covering high school sports. And I wouldn't want to. He's my partner, my co-host, and my friend. The winner of the Golden Voice Award, Jeff Dinsmore. Thank you, uh, thank you Kenton. Uh, I want to thank my mom and my brother Terry here 
and my wife is at home not feeling so well, but uh, Kenton's right. Um, uh, I just was in the hospital again and the doc said, you know, that's the best it's gonna get. And uh, that's the best it's gonna get that I'm gonna keep going. And uh, you know, this is, uh, means a lot to me. And uh, Ben Hale, thanks buddy. <laughs> No, no, but thank you to Heidi and, and Rose and Kenton and uh, and it, it, this means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff has certainly put in a lot of time with us over the years. Uh, well before I got here, I've been lucky enough to be with him the last 11 years. That's Jeff's eighth award. His sixth Golden Voice Award, he's also won Lifetime Achievement and the AFLP Award. Our next award is Sports Intern of the Year. I was an intern once and look at how that turned out. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Our internships may not be as glamorous as an internship at a major cable, hyper, mega, global, network, news, sports, broadcast net place, but it's still pretty good. The experience, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the experience of working hands-on with the equipment and our crew making TV while getting yelled at by me is second to some. <laughs> our Intern of the Year Award winner did everything that we asked of him. He was always on time and very dependable. He's a hard worker who welcomes new challenges, which is good because we make our interns do stuff. He has been running the camera, tape, audio, score box, announcing ENG, and helping out with Sports Den, becoming our resident Jerry when called upon. He also got engaged and called to get my permission before asking, which, you know, isn't necessary, but I appreciate that kind of loyalty. <laughs> she said yes, and who could blame her? He's got long red hair, and he still managed to make it this far. Congratulations to this year's Intern of the Year, Bobby Ersland. Unfortunately, Bobby's not here at the awards show. Fortunately, we have pre-taped an acceptance speech. Well, hi there, everybody. Uh, I wish I could be there accepting this award because uh, well, awards are awesome. I like winning them. Um, I want to thank everyone that had a, had a hand in, in this award and um, mostly me for being able to receive it. I think it's uh, I think it's great of me to get this award. Not as great that I I wasn't able to make it there because I had more important stuff going on. Pretty much anything would be more important. But you know what? That's great um, for me to get this award. Um, I'd like to thank my significant other, my friends. Uh, you know who you are because obviously you know who I am, and so the rest is obvious. Um, again, thanks. Um, community TV station that I sometimes work for. That's all. Our next award is the Iron Man Award. It goes to the person who sticks it out and shows up to as many shoots as humanly possible. Humans have limits. Our winner started as a volunteer and then was hired as a part-timer, and like many of the crew members, he often goes over his paid hours and volunteers his time regularly. He has been, he's become a regular fixture available for nearly every shoot of the year. He has helped provide consistency and reliability, which is a great thing to have on truck shoots. He most often runs game camera and also high tight and handheld as well, and he is happy to help out in any capacity, even commentating tennis while operating the camera on top of the truck. <laughs> Children, don't try that at home or really anywhere. Just don't do it. He still makes his own programs on Channel 14, and he has made North Metro TV a priority, and we are thankful for his commitment. Just last night, he came down from the press box with two cameras, tripods, and camera boxes hauling them all to the truck like a mule or a camel, only stronger, but without the accompanied odor. 
He did spit like a camel, though, as, as Broda found out for himself. You got to watch where you're walking. This year's Iron Man was not involved in any movie sequels that I am aware of. Congratulations to the 2011 Iron Man Award winner, Rob Clark. Thank you. Congratulations, you're welcome. Um, awesome. Yeah, I don't like to make too many trips if I can help it, so. Um, I only made one last night. Um, thank, uh, first of all, thank my wife for putting up with me be gone all the time, doing North Metro 14 stuff or 15 stuff. And um, just, uh, I love being here. It's fun working with the guys. Ken, thank you. That's Rob's second award. He also won Rookie of the Year. And he's got a lovely family. That's only three-fifths of the children right there. All right, you got two, two older ones. All right, it's time now for our Volunteer of the Year Award. This one goes to the crew member who has put in the most volunteer hours. Addition, major aspect of math. I can't stress this enough, kids. Stay in school or work in television. I'm really not much of a motivational speaker, so I mean, you, can, you have to make that choice for yourself. We used to crew all of our shoots with volunteers and interns. That's the way it was for many years until we added a part-time budget in 2006. We have a small budget for crew, but we need 9 to 13 people every shoot. We have three plus shoots a week, so we still rely heavily on volunteers to help us out. We simply can't do it without them. I've certainly learned that when you find some good people that hang around for a while, you count your blessings and really appreciate the time that they put in. This year's Volunteer of the Year has once again put in the time, helping out on the majority of our shoots, operating camera, mostly handheld, where he has, really has a passion. He gets a lot of enjoyment volunteering on our crew and at his church as well, which is a large part, large part of why he has been helping us out for close to a decade. He is an integral part of our team, and we thank him for his dedication to North Metro TV. We always appreciate the work that our crew puts in, especially when it's on their own time, volunteering to help us out. Congratulations to our 2011 Volunteer of the Year, Eric Svensk. Thanks for putting up with me, Kenton, for another year. I need a microphone. And just thank the rest of the crew. It was a great season. I hope to have another great season next year. Thank you, Eric. That's his sixth award. He's won four Volunteer of the Year awards. He's also won the Dean Hombo Award and the Platinum Shoulder Award. All right. Another round of applause. <laughs> and, oh, Eric. Eric Houston. And how about a round of applause for Ken? <laughs> now how about a round of applause for all of you? That's enough. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> ben. All right, all right, all right. Like many public access TV stations, I have to follow this with a serious award now. Like many public access TV stations, North Metro TV is blessed with an abundance of religious programs. These programs reach out to a community hungry for spiritually driven television, bringing them inspiration, worship, and entertainment through music, ministry, and recorded services. Producing these remarkable programs is a very special calling for a very special group of people who we honor every year with the Good Word Award for Excellence in Religious and Spiritual Programming. This year, the runners-up for the Good Word Award are Elizabeth Bankalay for The Virtuous Woman, Cindy Hardy for Kingswood Church, and Rick Larson for Love Power. <laughs> Pre
Producing a weekly program dedicated to recording a church service may seem like an easy task, but that's hardly true. Recording and broadcasting these ceremonies week after week for a viewership who may no longer be able to enjoy them any other way is a sacred trust and a respected duty. It takes a special sort of producer to live up to that burden, and a special one still to do it with the grace, humility, and joy of our next honoree. 2010 looks like it may have been the last year that she will have produced programs at the staggering rate of 40 to 50 a year, but that's all right. She hasn't retired, not entirely, meaning we and the viewers at home still get to look forward to her annual Living Stations productions, as well as any of the other wonderful programs she brings through our doors. This year, it is my honor to present the Good Word Award to Sharon Schultz. Um, my mom was uh, homebound for the last few years of her life, and she used to watch the Mass on TV and loved it. I think it was from Duluth um, that it was broadcast. But anyway, I want to thank North Metro for, um, for, um, <laughs> for showing the Mass and all the other religious programs. So thanks very much. Over the last few years, musical television programs have practically exploded on North Metro TV. Alongside a couple of old standards, we can now devote numerous hours to original gospel music, school concerts, local bands and musicians, karaoke showcases, and even original music videos. The number, of these, the number and quality of these programs is and has been for some time much too high to ignore, and so we honor those programs and the producers who bring them our way with the Golden Microphone Award. This year, the runners-up for the Golden Microphone Award are Linda Davis for Artbeat, Rick Bostrom for Blaine High School Concerts, and Rob Clark for EIEI -E Oops, Centennial Choir Fall Festival, and Taylor the Latte Boy. In musical terms, 2010 was the encore year for one of our longest running musical programs. A nine episode curtain call of wonderful music, joyful dancing, and of course, fantastic production value. Yes, after more than 75 episodes, Hotfoot Stompers has taken its final bow, and it has done so in style. So, in appreciation of five plus years of midwinter magic, Hawaiian nights, western nights, and hippie dances, and just good old-fashioned square dancing fun, not to mention the numerous musical episodes of her other program, Positive Investigations, which is still going strong. I am pleased to, uh, to honor Fran Sorensen with the Golden Microphone Award. I want to thank Ben, <laughs> Danica, Michelle, Heidi, Rose, Damien, and Eric, because they all know I'm in the studio when I'm there, because I need lots of help. Thank you, Joe, for being my host with the most, and thank you, North Metro, for everything. Thank you. I'm always amazed by just how many families we have volunteering at North Metro TV. It usually starts out with a single family member taking the classes or producing a program, and before long, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives are pitching in to help out or even creating their own unique shows. Whether they work together in one studio or in separate studios or edit suites, I'm always proud that North Metro TV can become an extension of that family's home a fun and safe place for a little extra family time and bonding. 
It's a welcome phenomenon here that I'm always proud to be even a small part of, and so this year I wanted to start honoring the careers of some of these families of volunteers with the Family Affair Award. The runners up for our first ever Family Affair Award are Robbie Ross, Jerry Jones, and Priya Ross Jones, Joe Sparts and Michael Sparts, and Rick Larson, Lee Larson, and Kathy Larson. I talked to one of our next two honorees a couple of weeks ago when taping the new episode of In Focus, our behind the scenes program. In talking to him about his and his son's experiences at North Metro TV, he told me about how much fun they've had and also how the opportunity to work together as not just father and son, but as colleagues on a shared project has given them the opportunity to try communicating in a new way, connecting as equals. It was, I thought, a very profound insight that got at the heart of why I'm so happy to have so many families volunteering at North Metro TV. Of course, I already decided to present this award to them before that interview. I'm always touched by the clear father and son bond they share, as well as their love for television production and for each other. So I'm proud to present the first ever Family Affair Award to Rick Bostrom and Josh Bostrom. He said he wanted to shout out to Ben, but he took it out. <laughs> but um, thank you. We really appreciate this award, and um, we've enjoyed working with all the people that we've had a chance to, with uh, Mark and Linda and Joe and Devery, um, and all the uh, good people, too, at North Metro, uh, especially Eric. We really appreciate all the work you've done helping us. Josh, Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. And so we come to the final Public Access Award of the evening, the Public Access Spirit Award. For the last couple of years, this has been the big award, both figuratively and literally. It's designed to honor a producer or volunteer who embodies the very best about public access. Sure, regular production of exceptional programming is a big part of that, but really, this is an award for the true volunteer. Someone who not only works hard on their own programs, but who helps me, our staff, or their fellow producers produce their programs and does so enthusiastically. This is an award for someone who loves public access television and shows it. This year, the runners up for the Public Access Spirit Award are Rick Bostrom, Joe Karpowitz, and Bart Tooker. Before I, I announce the winner of the Public Access Spirit Award, I want to take a second to, uh, to recognize some people who are here tonight that I haven't had a chance to recognize yet. I'd like to recognize uh, Jeff Kaburka and his daughter Mackenzie, who, uh, who are here tonight, who've been volunteering a lot lately, and I think Mackenzie has broken the record for youngest volunteer ever. Donald Jackson is here. He produces a wonderful program called Pour No More. Uh, Anita Wardlaw is here, who did a program this year, the FGFNA story, that was fantastic. Uh, Dottie McKinley and her daughter are here. They have an exciting program coming up about parks and trails and how great the ones in our community are. But for the Public Access Spirit Award, the winner hardly needs any introduction. Everyone here knows who he is, and that's part of the reason why he's receiving this award. But he's not just a regular face at North Metro TV. He's also the first and most enthusiastic volunteer on any project, whether that's helping me shoot a Christmas special helping Artbeat tape a musician, accompanying Joe Karpowitz to a car show, or f helping his fellow volunteers learn how to use Final Cut Pro when I'm busy. As for his own productions, it's been a banner year of high ambition and higher returns. Outside of the creation of several more episodes of his own terrific TV series, which he shares with Austin Gamst and Ben Reyes, he has also produced a truly charming short film and secured a Hollywood voiceover artist to record some new free intros for his show. I thought long and hard about whether or not to give him this award this year while he's still so young. Not because of his age in and of itself, but because I'm convinced that his greatest accomplishments are ahead of him. I could not be more proud to present. <clears throat> All right. 
the Public Access Spirit Award to Devery Foss. This is really a big award. <laughs> it is a really um, big award. It's you chocolate. Know, it's, well, I've gotten the wonderful opportunity to produce a new music video parody. Um, I've also gotten the opportunity to make a movie, a short film, which I got submitted in a film competition. And I've made, you know, just a bunch of shows with my new co-host, Ben Rays, who has just been wonderful. I mean, he, he hasn't... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's been a really great opportunity, you know... I, it's almost three years that I've been here and I've learned so much. I never even thought, you know, I'd, I'd get to learn so much and I, I, I really have. Um, so yeah, I, I, not only do I want to thank Eric, but you know, I've, I've helped a lot of people with their shows and I love doing it. They always give me tips, ideas, uh, you know, for my show and tell me how to improve and it's, it's really been a big help. And uh, who am I forgetting? <gasps> ben Hale. <laughs> <laughs> And now let's bring him back up here, the Laurel to my Hardy, the Abbott to my Costello, the Turner to my Hooch, Kent and Kent. I think we need to stop saying Ben's name. He's pretty late on the cuts there whenever he's patting himself on the back. Yes. <laughs> he's going to be impossible to work this with. This shot, now. that's no one on that shot, Ben. Come on. <laughs> ben. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. I, we want to thank all of the terrific volunteers uh, who we've honored tonight, whether with an award, a certificate, or just thank you, you know, even if you just came to support and to watch and to talk with your friends and to be here. Thank you so much for coming and for all of the hard work you do. We literally would not be up here without all of you. Yep. Great turnout tonight. I think that's a good sign. And uh, I want to thank uh, my crew. Uh, I appreciate all you guys, uh, the hard work that you do, because you do put in a lot of hard work. And uh, you guys are doing a great job. Keep keep that up. Of course, we want to we wanna thank the, the staff and everybody that put this uh, banquet together, and also the staff at Majestic Oaks and uh, everyone responsible for putting, the, uh, putting this banquet on. Uh, we also want to thank, uh, we want to thank Barbie and Nancy and John and Barb and Errol, who have all become uh, members of our staff family at North Metro TV over the last year or so. We really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for everything you do. And again, thank you everyone for coming. This is a real blast for Kenton and I to do. There's, there's nothing more fun than giving an award to your friends. And we get to do that multiple times every year. So thank you. Yeah, we hope you guys had fun because we had fun. And uh, this night was for all of you. So hope you had a good time. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.